Guys, what is going on? Back again with another Arbitrum ecosystem update. Uh, your boy Hunter. Uh, before we get into it, as usual, nothing in this video is financial advice, and everything I do say is my opinion and my opinion alone. Uh, first tweet of the day, we have a uh, tweet from Renzo Protocol. They say, uh, welcome to the first cross-chain restaking integration on Eigenlayer. Renzo, in collaboration with Connects Network, are bringing cross-chain restaking to Arbitrum. Users will be able to seamlessly restake natively on Arbitrum. Follow Renzo for more information on launch details. Uh, so re restaking has been actually a very hot topic in, in crypto lately. I'm not going to lie to you. It's definitely something I need to uh, educate myself more on just because uh, I've been in the weeds about on layer twos and like, uh, you know, if yeah, obviously everything Ethereum related, but mostly layer twos. Um, and restaking is definitely something that um, Eigenlayer in particular uh, happens to be kind of in the middle of. Um, but that being said, it seems like, you know, restaking is... Yeah, it's being it's, it's becoming something that's being integrated more and more into DeFi, um, and I think obviously Arbitrum is like ripe for you know uh, a lot of restaking protocols to kind of launch there. So it makes sense that Renzo Protocol is choosing to uh, do it uh, exclusively. It looks like uh, on Arbitrum, uh, at least currently. It says natively on Arbitrum, I should say. But um, yeah, uh, exciting to see though. Uh, yeah, it's funny because there's a lot of launches that happen on Arbitrum uh, day to day, but I just don't tend to highlight all of them just because. You know, at the end of the day, I don't want to like accidentally like recommend it. I'm not recommending this either, by the way. I don't like to kind of like showcase every project because, you know, we don't know how legit every project is and yada, yada, yada. But that being said, I wanted to make sure I hit this one just because I know uh, restaking, like I said, is a relatively big deal for a lot of people. Um, and in this case, uh, you know, uh, Eigenlayer uh, being one of the being part of this uh, in, a, in a certain perspective uh, is kind of an important thing. So. Uh, definitely take a look if you're interested in restaking uh, and Arbitrum in particular. We have another tweet uh, by myself here. Uh, I put this out earlier today, February 1st, by the way. Oh my God, it's February already. Um, I say essentially uh, that the Arbitrum stack is starting to experience a renaissance moment in Ethereum scaling. Uh, 20 plus Orbit chains publicly in development, 50 plus in stealth, leveraging the stack to create user-facing products in gaming, NFTs, DeFi, and more. Um, and I kind of go into detail a little bit about like what what you know, Arbit people who do run Arbitrum chains, uh, Orbit chains, uh, currently benefit from, including uh, 250 millisecond block time, which is the fastest out of any chain uh, currently out there, uh, completely complete on-chain governance, as well as full technical flexibility from alternative uh, data data availability, uh, all the way to custom gas tokens. Um, and the coming, what's coming, uh, I think is has to be the most exciting. Because obviously, and I, you know, if you've watched my videos, you already know all all these things, but. I'll of course, I'll of course uh, go ahead and say it for those who haven't. Uh, you have Stylus, which gives the ability for developers to code in Solidity, Rust, C, and C++, as well as any other WASM compatible language. Um, and that is on any Arbitrum chain that has the Stylus upgrade uh, enabled, which there should be a good amount uh, you know, later on this year when Stylus is mainnet ready. Uh, there's Bold, which is permissionless validation or uh, essentially permissionless fraud proofs. Uh, there's Time Boost, which is the uh, pretty much a modification to transaction ordering, uh, enabling for more MEV capture, uh, cross-chain interop with Espresso Systems shared sequencing, and what kind of plays into that a little bit too, uh, more recently released by the Off-Chain Labs team, is chain clusters uh, for the potential of shared liquidity amongst multiple chains. All of this while likely becoming the only sta uh, stage two roll-up stack by the end of the year. Uh, very important stuff, I think. You know, it's... Like, uh, you know, to me, if, if you're an infrastructure based team that, you know, like if, if you're essentially building infrastructure, like these like infrastructure that everyone relies on, then decentralizing should be priority number one. Um, I, I've always said that and I've always believed that even before I joined um, off chain labs. Uh, and what I will say is that, you know, and again, all this is my opinion uh, personally, but what I will say is that like, decentralization and enabling builders to continue to, uh, you know, build what they um, what they imagine or what they envision with with the least amount of limitations as possible is probably the most important thing that you can do and there aren't enough teams doing it um, I, I obviously i'm going to say that i feel like uh, we at Optin labs do that um hand over fist better than anyone else uh and the stylus thing alone i think has got to be the coolest thing i'm going to be talking about this thing so much when it hits mainnet <laughs> you guys don't even know but um, all these other things too are extremely important. Decentralization and, and uh, cross-chain interoperability is going to be a very, very big, big thing for layer twos uh, this year and, and and in the years to come as well. So, 
Uh, just really just bull posting here, essentially, just to remind people, hey, this is what's coming. Get excited. We have a tweet here, not necessarily about Arbitrum, but uh, it's, it's about another quote unquote layer two ecosystem project, you could say. Uh, Polygon Labs lays off 19% of the team after rapid growth during crypto's bull run. Uh, I think they had said that they laid off around, around like 40, 50 something people. I think it says it somewhere in the blog post, but uh, the, Polygon, the Polygon Labs team was actually around like 200, like close to like, like the high 200s, uh, low, mid 200s. And I think now they're at like 220 after this layoff. Uh, and, and, I, and I think there's something to be said about, you know, really like optimizing for a product that's sustainable. Um, and yeah, this is no shame or no hate to Polygon. They've done a lot for the for the crypto industry. They've also done a lot that I don't agree with um, personally. But uh, what I will say is that that's one thing that I, I think I've loved so much about being in the Arbitrum ecosystem in particular is that, you know, while there aren't a ton of like kind of zero to one moments or recent zero to one moments that have happened within the Arbitrum ecosystem, it's just like a steady trend line up in terms of builder adoption, uh, decentralization, and adopt and just like just general like community building. Um, and all of it is sustainable, is, is extremely sustainable. Um, to a certain extent, people have argued that, that the Arbitrum DAO is a little bit, you know, can be a little bit uh, stingy considering it's the biggest DAO in crypto. Uh, but I will say that, uh, you know, you, you have a lot less of things like this happening when you do optimize for being sustainable in the long run. Polygon has spent a ton of money on things that in all reality, like we're only just like narrative plays, right? A lot of the like the Instagram stuff, like the web, a lot of the big web two deals that made people think Polygon's BD was like insane was really just them paying for it <laughs> at the end of the day. Like if you pay Instagram X amount of money, like millions of dollars to be integrated, yeah, yeah they'll, they'll, they'll probably integrate you, right? So, you know, I, I will say that, you know, it's, it's definitely a shame to see people get laid off. I, I you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to dunk on anyone here. That it's, it's terrible for the people that were hired and then obviously let go because of this. Um, but it's one thing where, like, like I said, uh, you know, you, you got to build for the long term. You know, I think um, in bull runs, uh, people tend to get like very, very overzealous and like just, you know, money's flying everywhere. Um, but in a way, you kind of have to uh, like you kind of have to like expect like the next bear market while the next, while the current bull is happening. Uh, right now, it's kind of the opposite, right? We're you know we're we're going from a bear into a bull. Um, so they're so they're actually doing they're kind of doing this at a smart time i'd almost even argue now they probably realized hey we have way too many we have way too much staff we got to get a, a lot leaner which the, i think sandeep even said the ceo of polygon um and you know uh, hopefully they'll be able to kind of scale ethereum with polygon uh with the 220 people that they have uh left at polygon labs um but that being said uh, yeah I, I i wish all the best the people that were laid off um you know there's a lot of other teams hiring though which is honestly amazing uh, especially in crypto there's this there's, there's a ton of jobs and with the with the uh, the, the bull market coming it's a lot more people hiring too so uh great to see that uh and best of luck to the polygon folks but as usual guys feel free to uh you know give my uh, beneath the layers show a watch it's essentially a show dedicated to showcasing entrepreneurs in web3 as well as telling their stories uh, as i mentioned i am the host of this uh, amazing show, if I do say so myself. And uh, you can watch it on YouTube, Spotify, uh, X, uh, and even uh, yeah, Apple Podcasts. Any of those podcasting platforms you can catch it on. But with that being said, guys, as usual, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.